There is, um, <clears throat> you can also influence how the cache keys are created. And um, oh, you mean the hash? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly the hash for the for the mapping. Okay. Um, Why would you want to mess with that? Um, you could, instead of mess with it, you could influence it. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't change the problem. But what? Why would you would you change <clears throat> the way the the key would be generated? Yeah. Um, maybe let's find out. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, now let's have a look. Um, we can also change how the cache key is generated. Um, so on one side, you can um, also completely customize it. Uh, if we have a look at the documentation, um, there's also the, the cache key generator. So what you can do, you can implement this interface, then you get here the method and the method parameters, and you can create some cache key however you want. Do your magic, okay. Do your magic. Um, yes, so that's one way. But um, often it can happen, for example, if you want to cache your REST endpoint. Could also be that we want to directly want to cache the result here. Um, rather endpoint. Okay. Ah, cache name. Okay, we want to cache this now. But here we also have some REST header uh, user agent, for example. Mm -hmm. So now the user agent will always be different and it, uh, the caching shouldn't depend on the user agent. So okay. um, in that case, what you can do is you can say a cache key. Oh, then you can ignore it, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. and with add cache key, if you have, if any parameter has this annotation, mm -hmm. then only the parameters with this annotation will be used. Okay. So in our case, we would want this. Okay. Uh, let's write them below. So now we know we have the cache key city and date, but the user agent thing we ignore. Okay. So yeah, we would. This would mean this method is not called for another user agent, mm -hmm. because we say yeah we 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 have the cache result already, so it would okay. not be good if you want to lock this here. But um, yeah, if you have some a parameter that you uh, that is not relevant to the caching, but maybe you want to pass it in for logging, maybe a tracing ID. Mm -hmm. which request uh, created this expensive call, but the tracing ID has no influence on the cache result. Okay. Uh, and the same would be here with the user agent. So user agent is a standard header field, right? Yeah. Let, so let's see if it works. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Postman always sends the user agent. Yeah, but it's... Looks good. So, here we see the Postman. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, it's on... Bye-bye. Oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, here we, we, we see the... Uh, uh, cannot scroll down. Just going to hide you again. Okay. Um, here we see oh, we, we lock the user agent. Mm -hmm. um, and now if we, uh, let's put some other value but in here. In your case, it says user minus agent. Yeah, but it knows that in headers you use uh, sometimes minus, sometimes, or always ah, minus. Okay. So it can automatically find it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nice. It's, it uses the camel case to get to, it should be user minus agent. Okay. And it also ignores case and stuff. Because headers, I think they don't have casing. Um, hmm. User agent uh, something. 
So the call was quick, and so we also don't have any locks here. Ah, because okay. we never got into this function. Okay. It's cached. But yeah, like I said, a, a tracing ID would be a, a perfect example if you want, if you have a generated tracing ID that you put into every call. Mm -hmm. So you can later in Stana see every connected call. Mm -hmm. um, that this view would also want to send to the next system where you get a config from or so. Okay. Um, this expensive call, but it has no influence on the result um, and whatsoever. So it should be ignored for the cache key. But do you also have something that can, like if you have 10 different parameters you want to uh, get into the function, do you also have something like a cache key ignore to turn the logic around? No. So you have to do yeah. the cache key for every single one except yes. for the one you do. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess they didn't want to do both ways just to avoid the complexity. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, if you want to not select one, then you need to name all the ones that you need to, mm -hmm. that you want to use. Great. Yeah, I mean it's. Okay. But it's something. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty nice. Very cool. Um, yes, that's that. Um, one interesting thing. Um, if you have multiple calls that want to get this, there's also a locking mechanism in here, in the cache result. So when we start this again, just to clear the cache, it's also one way to clear the cache. <laughs> um, the perfect tip for uh, in production, right? Just restart it. Kubernetes, just restart it. <laughs> update the deployment, it makes a rolling update, all the pods are are restarted and cache is clear. <laughs> That's the requirement. <laughs> requirement fulfilled. <laughs> um, let's call this cache a couple of times in parallel. Um, to have it easier, I will use the browser. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, F5 is no. Uh, you want to call him in parallel? Or you want to yeah, call him? I want to call him in parallel, basically. You know you can do this in Postman, right? Just ah, who needs that? Automation, just to run the collection and tell them to do it <laughs> 50 times. Yeah, but I don't, don't know by heart how to set this up now. Um, what? Okay, so this is the next section we are doing today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, but first, so I made these four calls. And the first, it was hard to see, the first one um, took the longest. Mm -hmm. And then they all finished basically at the same time. Okay. What we see here in the log is we were fetching the weather forecast. We started fetching. Wait, I'm going to can't switch you around, but I'm going yeah, yeah, wait, to wait a yeah. So okay, now the ghost right. is talking. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um. So what you see here, we did this once, only once. This mm -hmm. although. Um, we requested at the same time when there was nothing in the cache. So what add cache result is doing, it is also adding a locking me mechanism around your method. Mm -hmm. So you make this call only once. And then whenever the call finishes, all the other ones who are waiting in the locking mechanism, they also get the result. So that you don't have to, just because you a uh, thousand clients decide to go to your site now, Mm -hmm. that you don't call your next system a thousand times when you really so, want to just cache it. You will still, it will still take you two seconds to get the result. And yeah. when you got the result, then you will... Then everybody uh, gets the result. Okay. But you can't see it the way you did it. Like, kind of, but not really. You don't have any timings. Yeah. Okay. Tell me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, go to your collection. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, before you click it, I'm not sure if you have anything on there which no, we're no. not supposed to see, okay. And then you can go to collection. Uh, yeah, so now we, we oh yeah, uh, go to the three dots right next to the collection, uh, the top one, yeah, that one. And uh, now right. run collection. Yeah, I remember. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, now you select yes, and now you want to uh, say iterations, say 100 or whatever, and let's <laughs> clear the cache. Yeah. Right, I forgot about this feature. 
<laughs> I thought the, you want to write a test with no. JavaScript and stuff. No, no. Um, and now... Delay. Uh, I yeah, think... make, make it like 10 millisecond delay. 10. Yeah, that yeah, should work. Let's make 100. Can we see something? Right. And now normally if you run this now, you should actually see... Oh yeah, there you go. So you will see the first one. Yeah, 100 was might, might be a little bit too much. <laughs> all right, done. If you scroll all the way up, then you see the first one actually took longer and the second one, they're all pretty fast then. But it, mm, but it wasn't in parallel then. It was... True, but yours, yours wasn't in parallel either, right? Uh, but you maybe... Mine was in parallel because I, I, I called them in this two second frame but this is sequential here. well it is yeah but we want to oh, have wait. it in parallel oh uh, i think i think there's an option for it uh, how can i get back um go to the error okay or oh, this way then advanced settings huh I thought there was you something. You promised me something. I know, I know. <laughs> I think huh. it's doing it I think there was, a, there was an option. I thought there was an option before. So you can just say, okay, just send it. Um, hmm. Can't really read the top part, but I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, now it's uh, fast, but... Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I could also remove this cache here. Then we can use the cache clear method again. The one I already implemented. Yeah, but I think you're right. It will run the next one only, after only the when the first one is done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're supposed to see a few of them take longer and yeah. then all of them go fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so now the first one will... Okay, yeah, never mind then. So my browser idea wasn't too bad. Your browser idea wasn't too bad, yeah. Let's let's make one thing. Uh, let's get rid of this here. Well, add it back in. Um, I wanted to increase the time. To give us more time. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Then it makes it easier. That also see. works, yeah. So, we have the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth. You see they are all pending. Mm -hmm. And now they all finish at the same time. And here we only have one call that actually made ah, it into the function. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Now you can see it. All right. Nice. Yeah. So... If you would call some expensive backend service, maybe also something that costs you money, um, then you would do it only once. Nice. That's very cool. Yeah. I think that's it for today's caching session.